look, we are looking for somebody like you um, who speaks IT, but then also speaks nutrition. And a lot of people don't realize that they need somebody who has informatics training until you tell them what you can offer them. And then they're like, oh, I need a you, but I didn't know that I needed you until you said what you did. There is um, nobody doing what we're doing before us. There's no evidence-based. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Kim, Rose Dietitian, as you know, and today I have a very special guest dietitian with us. So without any further ado, we're just going to jump in and I'm going to allow her to introduce herself to you. I am Tamara Melton. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist. I live in Atlanta, Georgia, and I wear two major hats right now for work. Um, one is the uh, National Director for Health Informatics for Morrison Healthcare. Uh, that's my full-time role. And my other hat is recently created. I am the co-founder of the nonprofit called Diversified Dietetics. And our mission is to empower underrepresented minority students to pursue a career in nutrition and dietetics. That is awesome, Tamara. Thank you for joining us today. So I know that you alluded to it earlier when you introduced yourself, but tell us what non-traditional role do you hold as a registered dietitian in health informatics? In health informatics, I am actually the one of the only dietitians I think I know of who does this. I'm the director of health informatics for Morrison Healthcare. We're the largest healthcare food service company in the United States. What sparked your interest in health informatics in the first place? Interesting story. And to kind of give a background of it, I'll tell what informatics is because some people are like, what does that even mean? Um, and I like to tell people that informaticists are the liaisons between the IT world and end users, as we call them, and in our space that is dietitian. Um, and then also the company I work for, it's also chefs and um, our frontline associates and things like that. So what sparked my interest in that, um, about 2009, I had my own business. Mm -hmm. And in that business, I was, it was a wellness business called LaCarte Wellness. So if you email me today, that's still the, the email that I use is LaCarte Wellness. And at the time I was going in, it was my business to go into corporate clients and I would ask them to see their um, insurance records. And what I wanted to see, because I was third party, I was trying to see their data. And I wanted to see what were they spending the most healthcare costs on. And most of the time it was diabetes. And so I would suggest a pre-diabetes program instead of the biggest loser program that they always wanted to go for. Um, because what I was trying to do was to affect the most change to bring the most amount of dollars that they were spending out to go down. I didn't know it at the time, but I was doing data analytics um, and using data meaningfully. So fast forward a couple years, I was at Georgia State University and I was, um, had a 50-50 job at that time. 50% of it was teaching for the nutrition faculty and then the other 50% was to help to uh, do admissions and recruitment, but then also to help to start new programs. And one of the new programs that we went out for at Georgia State was a health informatics program. And my dean at the time, who was my boss, asked me, do you want to help to write the prospectus, we call it, so it's a proposal you send off to the state of Georgia at the time because we we're a state school to say, can we start this new program? And I, I agreed because it's my job and I wasn't gonna say no. <laughs> so I did it. But uh, one of the things that I found interesting as I was going through it was, wow, I was like, oh, this is a lot of like data stuff and technology. I am a nerd to my core. Uh, I love building websites and I love data, like I'm a data nerd. I love data. I like not necessarily spreadsheets, but I love visualizations of data. Um, and so as I was looking at this, I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. I really like it. And my, we got approved for the program and my deans could see my interest in it. And so they asked me, do you want to be the director of this program? And I was like, yes, I had no idea what I was doing. But at the age that I was at and the fact that I didn't have a PhD, there would have been no other time at a level one research institution that I would have that opportunity. So I jumped right on it, um, which was great because I learned so much about informatics itself. And I also learned about the administration of a program in higher ed um, because we developed not only an undergraduate program, but before I left that position, we also started a uh, graduate certificate um, for health informatics as well. And during my time at Georgia State in this position, I needed to get formal training in informatics. And so I went to Duke University, um, actually in the nursing school, and I took an informatics uh, graduate course, our program there, and I completed that program. 
And throughout that program, um, they did such a good job in teaching us all the different components of kind of high level of different health informatics um, domains and things like that, that I really was just like, man, this is very cool. And I think I really could do this for work. I love to teach. It is one of my favorite things to do. But one thing I think that um, academia should always have, especially in a discipline like informatics or anything in healthcare, is that you should always practice. Um, and I had never really practiced in informatics. And so, and this is kind of a story of how you never want to burn a bridge. I reconnected with a dietitian. Um, her name is April Rasco. She lives down in Florida now. And April knew me from undergrad. Undergrad, I went to University of North Florida in Jacksonville. So April knew me. Way back when, when I was getting my volunteer hours, she let me come and shadow her and things like that. So she saw me at Fincy in Nashville in 2015. And she asked me like, what are you doing? And at the time I was at Georgia State as program director, but I was at uh, doing my practicum portion of that Duke program at a hospital locally here in Atlanta. And very, very high overview of what that project was is I was at the level one trauma here in Atlanta. It's called Grady Memorial Hospital. It's a very large uh, hospital here, pretty well known. Um, as far as what it, what it is and what it's for, um, it's great for training, but I was able to get in with the chief of ophthalmology at Grady, and he wanted to be able to develop an algorithm that would fire uh, what's called a BPA, basically an alert in the electronic health record system. Um, after a patient with diabetic retinopathy comes in to get their eye screened, um, that screening, that picture is sent off to ophthalmologists who are wherever, and they're reading those screenings. They actually uh, will read those, and then they're gonna measure how soon the patient is, uh, or how severe their diabetic retinopathy is, and how soon they could possibly go blind. And they send that data back to the EHR at Grady. And what we had a disconnect was, was triaging the patient. So how do we get those patients to come back in before they go blind? And so that was my project. How do I go around and help um, not only the, um, the, the CMAs or the medical assistants who are doing the screenings to make sure they get the patients with, who need their eye screenings to get done, um, once they come in to get those screenings, you know, out and then back to the electronic health record so that it fires so that the scheduling department knows to call back the patient to explain to the patient why they need to come back in. Therefore, we'd hopefully reduce blindness. So it's a, it was a multi-layered project that had technology as portions of it. So I told April this and she was just kind of like, I want you to say exactly what you said to somebody I'm about to take you over to. And I was like, okay. So we were at the expo floor at Fenty and she walked me over to the woman who is now my boss, Peggy O'Neill. And she said, this is Peggy. I was like, hey, Peggy. Peggy was like, hi, Tamara, whatever. And, she, and April was like, tell her what you told me. And so I told her. And long story short, they basically said to me, look, we are looking for somebody like you um, who speaks IT, but then also speaks nutrition. Um, and they wanted, there was so much technology that's being used, not only with our dietitians, but a lot of our other employees and data that's being you know, to create it out of all this technology that they wanted somebody to come in to do that. So that's what my current role is uh, right now. Um, a lot of it, when I first started with them as a contractor a couple years ago, um, was we were creating an app and developing an app. And now that we have the app up and running is getting that data out of that. But I do a lot of projects around um, software development, um, a lot of data visualization, a lot, a lot of what we call process improvement or change management, where I will go in and tell my coworkers, because I'm kind of like an internal consultant. My saying is always, we can't throw an iPad at every, project, at every problem out there. Sometimes it's just a people problem. And so we'll do process improvement and things like that. And so a lot of that training I got was um, from the program I did at Duke. Um, they, they cover all those, those different topics. So, so yeah, so that's where I'm at today uh, with, the, with the job that I have. I know that you know, you're working on different projects all at mm -hmm. one time, as you said. What does a typical work week look like for you? It depends on what's going on in the company. So it's kind of um, cyclical, if you will, in that we have, I work from home, um, so I got dressed for you today. Excuse <laughs> me, <laughs> <laughs> my PJs. I got some makeup on everything. Um, but uh, what's usually going on is that there is any number of projects that my um, colleagues will reach out to me and say, hey, we need your expertise. It has something to do with technology or data. And so I can think over kind of the last week, um, we're preparing for our VP. She's going in for a large meeting. Um, so I was doing a lot of data visualization. So I'm the one who will put together, um, take different um, spreadsheets and slightly analyze the data. I don't do tons of data analysis. I'm not getting into like 
SAS or SPSS, that would make me want to slip my wrist. This is not my thing. Um, what I like to do is just take simple Excel, which actually can do tons of uh, analysis on its own. Excel is probably one of the most powerful um, analysis software that's out there. I'll take that and then I'll put it into a format that the audience, whoever is presenting the data, the audience can consume that data. And there's an art and a science to data visualization. So I'll spend a lot of time looking at the data, talking to my coworkers, asking them who their audience is, what's the point of your presentation, what are you trying to get across to them, and that helps me to craft the, the slides or whatever um, visualizations that they're using. And then we'll spend time together going over it, because I'm usually not the one presenting to the, the data, to explain to them what the data is behind the visualization and how they will present it to either our internal customers, which are our coworkers, or our clients, our external customers, the hospitals that we serve or the patients that we serve or whoever it is. So that's a lot that I have going on. Um, I might be talking to a vendor. They're doing a software development project for us. So I'm that liaison between the people who are saying the end users who want the software to do something. So I will spend a lot of time with our end users to ask them, what do you want it to do? And I just ask them to say it in their own terms. And I take that and write it down into requirements documents to translate it into IT. And then I work with IT as they're developing our projects. Um, and so that's a lot of my time um, as well. And then a lot of my time is also um, in presentations as well. Um, I'm uh, working on some large projects that I own myself. Um, and so I might be working on presentations to, um, to, my, to my colleagues or to a larger group. Um, I rarely ever speak to our actual clients. I, my customers are my employees. So everybody who works for Morrison Healthcare is actually who I work for um, because I'm in the corporate support team. So I don't usually see the clients, um, but everything that I do is supporting all those folks who are, are working in there. And so I could be doing um, some presentations and soon what I'm excited about, because I love to teach, we're gonna start training our employees more on how to use all this data that they've been gathering um, and how they can use it themselves. So we're creating um, tools and things like that so they can um, have access to data and they won't have to come to us always, our team for data. Um, and to be able to use it, it could do kind of their own little data analysis. And so that's another um, thing that I do on a weekly basis. So it's a lot of um, phone calls. Um, we're virtual. So let me, I'm going to throw another question in here because okay. health informatics sounds like a very intriguing field and not to jump to two questions down, but I see it growing in related mm -hmm. to dietetics. So if someone is interested in health informatics, what advice would you give them? Because it sounds intimidating listening to you. You know, you're communicating with IT, which is a whole nother beast. Yeah. And the individuals which are probably watching this YouTube video are interested in food and nutrition. So right. what advice would you give to someone? Uh, if you want to go into this, the first thing you have to be okay with is being extremely uncomfortable all the time because you're going to be. Um, and I say that because not everybody who's a dietitian, but a lot of us like to be very comfortable. We like things to be very perfect. We are not about taking risks. We're just not about that. And you have got to be somebody who's okay with that. There is nobody doing what we're doing before us. There's no evidence based. There's no none of that. So you have to be really, really comfortable with that. You have to be a lifelong learner and you have to be self-motivated to teach yourself. People think that you have to be tech savvy you don't have to be tech savvy so much more than using a phone um, and figuring out how, if you're the person that grandma can give her phone to you and be like, show me how to make this work and you show her how to make it work, that's pretty much all you need to know how to do. It really is much more about being comfortable with being uncomfortable, with taking risks, with being innovative. I'm always that person in the room, everybody's like rolling their eyes out like, oh my God, tomorrow. We're, we're gonna, and I'm like, we're gonna try this. I would be very frank with someone and say, if you're not comfortable with being uncomfortable, you're probably not going to really enjoy uh, informatics. Um, so that's, that's probably my biggest advice in that area. Amazing. So you hear that, folks? You have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. So the next question is, how do you see the field of dietetics evolving to involve or include, rather, more informatics? It's just the uptick that we're seeing with technology everywhere and data. So data is all around us. Uh, when you use a GPS system, it's using data either if you're using like, using like a Waze, it's using data from other people or data that the, the company itself has, has used. 
uh, is using to kind of create their, um, their maps. Um, banking, you're using data. Uh, Netflix is capturing data on you. Everything is using data. And some people will say, oh, I don't like all this data being used and like predicting what we should be doing. You're probably getting metrics at your job um, telling you that you want to reach that. And so whether you like it or not, I like to tell all dietitians you are working in informatics, um, whether you want to or not. Um, for those of us who are clinical, which is not me, by the way, because I don't, I've never done clinical, but a lot of our dietitians are clinical. They're definitely ones who saw informatics come in probably full force because um, they were the ones who were affected by it the most. And it's just not going to go away. Do I think that people's jobs are going to be taken over because of, of um, technology? I think some are, but other jobs will be created. Um, and so I think that that's, that's something that, that is going to happen um, as well. Um, I think for those who are working kind of in uh, more of a, an educational space, so if you're an educator, I think they should be teaching students about um, creating opportunities in, um, in dietetics with technology. I gave a presentation at our national, uh, sorry, our state uh, conference here back in March, and I just kind of gave like a future of technology, and I was showing them how robots are delivering uh, food to people, or how people are scanning their meals and getting the nutrition facts back from it, or how kids at schools have some of those um, TV menu boards now that are telling them their foods that they should be eating. Behind every single one of those technologies should be a dietitian. So I encourage people to think about where is their food and technology. Yeah, the techie guys, the developers or ladies are going to be the ones who are developing the software, but it's got food related to it. So behind that, there needs to be a dietitian or a team of dietitians um, who are part of that. So I think there's a lot of opportunity out there um, that may not be a traditional role. And a lot of people don't realize that they need somebody who has informatics training until you tell them what you can offer them. And then they're like, oh, I need a you, but I didn't know that I needed a you until you said what you did. Um, and so that, I think that there's a lot of opportunity out there. Everything you said is really just the future of food as well as mm -hmm. dietetics. And if you guys didn't know, I'm very much interested in health informatics. So to have Tamara tell me all of this information and just to see where it's headed, we definitely need to keep up with the trends. We do. Yeah. Because um, if not, someone else will. Exactly. Yeah. And I tell people that I'm like, we're, we're primed to assist and not every job. I've talked to people um, who are, uh, who've been approached by app developers, dietitians. Hmm. And they're like, I don't know if I can do it. I'm like, yes, we can. Trust me. I'm like, there's an internet. The internet gives so much information. I'm a professional Googler, let me tell you. What I do all day, I probably have done 10 times already today with the work I did, the project I was working on. I do not know what I'm doing, but Google does. Um, it's not the same as what we all learn our traditional, you know, we've gotta go to this evidence base and it was on that RD exam. It's not out there. Like you're looking and asking people like, how did you do this and trying things out? So if somebody approaches you and they're like, hey, I'm an app developer, just for the sake of whoever their clients are, help them out because they need a dietitian. If they're doing anything food and nutrition, there needs to be an RD behind it. I will just continue to say that. Tamara, tell us what social media platforms we can find you on. You can find me on uh, Instagram most of the time, and it's my name, Tamara Melton RDN. So on there, you will see a mix of mommy stuff because <laughs> I'm a mom of two little girls. Uh, but you will see me posting things about informatics. I try to post some, some things on there just to kind of make it real to people. And then of course, um, some diversified dietetics, some things on there, but really easy. It's just at Tamara Melton RDN on Instagram. And then also tell us about your email address, just in case anyone has any health informatics questions they want. Yeah, to ask you. that's super easy too. It's Tamara at Tamara Melton.com. So <laughs> that's thank you very much for tuning in with us today and giving us all this information on health informatics. Again, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and connect with Tamara on Instagram or email her. Thanks for watching. Bye.